the, the hardware is complete except for the final details of this surface that we're working on. And the software is not yet complete. I'm finalizing algorithms that do things like remove noise from the signal, um, which we'll look at in depth a little more later. And so there's, a, there's calibration software that's in what you'd probably call an alpha stage or something like that. But it's enough that some really interesting demos um, have been done. I took this out. There was a, I took this out to Decibel Festival in Seattle a few weeks ago, and um, a lot of people were able to approach it and make noise and have fun. Um, like I hope we can all do in a second here. But this is why I'm pulling up my uh, my code editor at this point to do the demo. So. Maybe I'll maybe you'll get to see some live coding also <laughs> during the um, so you bring the right now with the alpha software you bring the sound plane up and you say calibrate and what what it is is a network of sensors under here that I can go into more detail into but the sensors actually detect the position between a um, a bunch of metal plates that are just inside the top of the device and a bunch of and a bunch of plates further in and between them there's a layer of uh, of squishy foam that's a lot like this so we've got some metal antennas on top and some metal antennas on the bottom inside this thing and then based on determining the distances between them you can actually get all of these multiple sensitive uh, touches out of it. Can you see there? Yeah. yeah, okay. So what you're looking at now is the the raw data coming out of the sensor. Um, well, if you really look at the raw data, it would look like uh, that or something. It's not every, you have to calibrate it and get the, uh, get the rest states of all of these um, sensors. But this it's in a it's in a very raw state because this this just essentially sends these pressure values, um, but a raw matrix of pressure values is not something that's easy to figure out how to use to do computer music with. Um, so, what this application does uh, is boils down this raw data and then puts out MIDI messages or open sound control messages that you can then send to Maximus P or you can send to um, you know other programs like commercial soft synth to uh, make your sounds. So I've got on the desktop, actually it'd be good to start with Max because you can fiddle around with it pretty easily. So this application is turning the the pressure data at eight eight by sixty four points. It's boiling down this sort of ocean of data and figuring out what what clusters of pressure readings correspond to one touch of a finger. And then furthermore, what is the what is the X and what is the Y and what is the Z locations of that pressure data? So a lot of people ask, like, what? Well, how many touches can I do on it? And it it really depends not on the software, but sort of on the physical layout of the device. And this is probably true true with a lot of multi-touch things. Well, you, if you have ten fingers, you could probably do ten touches. But um, the restriction isn't the software, but it's it's really how close together can you get two of these lumps before they the software can't tell them apart anymore and it, it becomes one lump. So. I'm going to hopefully. So this is just the, this is the very raw sensor data coming out of the sound plane, and the what the there's a max patch that's doing something really simple for each of the first four touches that come out, and it's it's. Sending X right to the um, the pitch of an oscillator, 
but it's it's calibrated so every time you see two dots on here it's one octave just like a guitar except on the bottom there's no there's no way the string can be open so to speak so you have another where on a guitar you don't have a marker down here uh, you have one and then Y is going to a filter a filter sweep on that touch so you can have two touches that cross each other like that and Z is going to the um, resonance of that filter so one thing you notice is that unlike say you can you can touch it fairly lightly even though this is the alpha software and there's a long way to go with this you can touch it really lightly and you know get a sound the other thing is you can touch it very heavily and get a sound and here what you're seeing is stuff that is the more complicated filtering that needs to be done what you're seeing and hearing you know as it goes off it's like whoa where are those touches and that's a it's a pretty complex problem in filtering but one that I'm going to send out audiovisual updates on the progress of over the next uh, eight weeks or so. And it's going to be really exciting as this goes from something that's a little bit eh, eh, to, you know, like a great case, but mm, to like something that I'm actually sitting down and playing a Bach prelude on it for something to demonstrate the musical capabilities, which I think needs to be done really soon now. Um, but you're seeing it where it's at. And if, if anybody wants to uh, <coughs> lay hands on it, well, my USB cable is this long, so. A lot of people, when they saw it on the the internet, I you know I've been had this project in the works for a long time, and some people have been following it for a while, and they thought it was going to be more of like a continuous surface, like a giant mouse pad or something. Um, but the the what I set out to do was make a flexible wood top. I want it to be wood because I don't know we spend so much time touching metal and plastic stuff all day, and there's something really Acoustic instruments are not only sensitive, but they're not made of these materials that we're always touching all the time when we, um, you know, use our computers and when we use our DJ boxes and so on. So I, I thought, what you know, and it's great sustainable material too. Uh, it's beautiful. So all these reasons, um, play it that. Also, I know I know people who are allergic to the solvents that they make plastics out of, and so they can't they can't they have to be really careful about the things that they use in their their daily lives. Um, so anyway, I wanted to make this wood surface that was flexible, but not being a mechanical engineer, it took me a long time before I realized that wood, you can make a really thin sheet of wood and it'll bend for you, but if this was all one solid piece of wood, no matter how much um, it, it were, it's flexible uh, as a sheet, if you pull down the middle, it's still not elastic. So the whole, instead of one point like this, you know, you'd see the whole thing going like from there to there and, and down. It would pull the whole surface toward it. So um, the solution was to break up the wood part into these little key sort of areas and to have a, a, a rubber um, backing. And what this this is a uh, this is an earlier surface. It's okay. It won't. It's it's half broken already. It's a prototype that we've uh, banged on a lot, and it's not it's not the actual um, finished solution that we're we're going with. Um, but it's a pretty interesting artifact from the process. So I thought I'd. Um, Do you worry about having shared around uh, dirt accumulating here, and then having your your last your elastic go away, and then all of a sudden they are linked together? Elastic go well. I suppose there's a lot of dirt yeah. accumulated, or a cup of something. Well, a cup of something is always a problem. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I've I've gotten some pieces of crud in here sometimes, and used like a toothpick or whatever yeah. to get them out. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> In the worst case, I suppose that could be a replaceable item. Sure, yeah. It's the, the main 
extent of the sound plane is in the, the you know, the electronic circuitry that's inside. So right, so you can have that be stylized also. In On the other hand, uh, frankly, I think this will hold up for a long time. Um, we're just figuring out. We've gone through a few iterations of what is the best adhesive to use when you want to glue rubber to something, and that turns out to be kind of an annoying problem. So, is it bamboo? Is that what it's? Is that what the wood is? No, it's it's walnut. It's oh. a veneer. It's a thin veneer.